Let's get into that first game, shall we? Between Christopher and Chisok, two phenomenal players going head to head in this winter semifinals. As you can see, Christopher is leading with that Alola Ninetales in the Primarina, and Chisok is going to be matching that with the Primarina of their own and Incineroar. Yeah, so this is pretty fun. You know, you get the Ninetales coming out immediately, and while Christopher doesn't have that Clefairy, you know, you can set up an Aurora Veil and that also gives you added defenses. So kind of does a similar thing to Clefairy and kind of boosting your partner up. Also able to actually get some damage off. Now Ninetales in this position is pretty much never going to be attacking. So I think wants to prioritize an Aurora Veil. Uh, one thing you have to watch out for is do you suck just going for like a fake out and a, you know, max pre Marina and just trying to pick up a knockout onto it on turn one. If you turn the weather into rain as well, you can no longer go for Aurora Veil in subsequent turns. But uh, looks like, you know, you also have to be wary of Ninetales just going for a protect or a switch out. Uh, so yeah, G-Suck just kind of pushing the uh, go button immediately and Dynamaxing that Pre Marina. We've seen the similar strategies for a lot of Pre Marina players in this tournament, which is just Dynamaxing really early to try to get off as much damage as possible. And what I really like about this coming out from Chisok is that he, he's kind of recognized that Christopher's Pre Marina is going to be a really big threat, probably one of the more adamant damage dealers on the team. But Christopher. Not wary to this, going to be Dynamaxing the Prima Arena as well on his side of the field. Yeah, so I'm curious if Christopher, you know, opted to go for an Aurora Veil. Uh, either way, we won't actually end up seeing it happening, but uh, G-Suck just ended up playing it, you know, pretty safe here. You don't want to double up until the Ninetales in case the Protector switches out. This way you at least deny the uh, Aurora Veil with the fake out turn one regardless and then get a lot of damage onto Christopher's Prima Arena. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We can see that Chisok's Primarina is moving first in this matchup, Dynamaxing first and also getting this Max Starfall off before Christopher's Primarina can move. So we're going to be able to set the terrain and see what Christopher's Primarina is going to fire back with. Yeah, a life orb here on Chisok's uh, Primarina as well. So, you know, indicating that it's a little bit more fast paced and offensive. Max Geyser comes out and actually just picks wow. up the one hit KO onto Incineroar. And this is one of the reasons why Prima Marina is so strong in this format. You know, you've got really, really powerful attacks against some of the most common Pokemon in the format, like Incineroar, for example. So it's pretty difficult to knock out Incineroar normally in one shot, but, uh, you know, one of the best moves you can have against it is a Max Geyser from Prima Marina. So picking up the knockout immediately, and I think, you know, it's a pretty good trade for both players there. I think the fact that GCOX uh, Prima Marina is faster is a big deal, but as you can see, Christopher's Prima Marina is so bulky, I'm actually not even sure three Max Starfalls KOs it. Uh, so, you know, despite it being faster, if you can't actually knock it out, it doesn't really end up mattering. And now with the rain up as well, Christopher can maybe just Max Geyser into this Clefairy slot. We'll see what happens uh, as Christopher Khan does bring that Alolan Ninetales back into its Pokeball in favor of the Ferrothorn. So Ferrothorn is going to be a factor in this game. Uh, we saw that Chisok doesn't have a Ferrothorn of their own in the back. And without an Incineroar, it might be really difficult to take out that Ferrothorn that's sitting on the field. But this Max Geyser does a hefty chunk of damage to this Ferrothorn in the rain with that crit on top. Oh my goodness! Uh, you know, Ferrothor normally considered one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the format, but cannot eat a Max Geyser well there at all. And uh, Chisok going for the Protect there on the Clefairy, a safe play there. You do not want it to just get KO'd. You want to burn Christopher's Dynamax turns. And Ferrothor, after eating it, that critical hit falls to very, very low HP. However, you know, the subsequent turn, Christopher is free to just go for another Max Geyser onto the Clefairy slot. That's, I think, relatively risk-free. And the tough thing about this pre Marina is, as you're seeing Gsoc go for the Helping Hand Starfall, you know, Ferrothorn isn't really that scary. You don't really want to expand a Max move into that slot as well. So just getting as much damage off as possible before the Clefairy faints. Really good call from Chisok to try to get this knockout onto the Primarina, but even with the Helping Hand, and uh, it's really not going to make too much of a difference in the amount of damage that Christopher is doing, maybe ensuring that it's going to be a three-hit knockout, but the Max Geyser comes through for Clefairy, and with no Protect this time, Clefairy does get knocked out. And there's the Leech Seed as well, so Ferrothorn, still kind of a nuisance, you know, able to heal back with leftovers, and now uh, Gsoc can't even actually switch out the Primarina because he's down to his last two Pokemon, so this is just taking guaranteed residual damage from the Leech Seed every turn, while Christopher's Pokemon are able to heal up from it as well. So, I think, you know, Christopher also has that Ninetales in the back, which can set up a late-game Aurora Veil, which could be quite valuable. Uh, Chisok does have two of the more offensive Pokemon on his team with the Prima Marina and the Urshifu. I think one thing that's actually a little tricky for the Urshifu here is that its Focus Sash will be broken by the uh, Ninetales' uh, hail. And so one of the big questions I have is what is the last Pokemon on Christopher's end? Because 
Juicebox has been able to kind of chip away a little bit here and there. Uh, so the main thing is, can you basically deny any more major damage from coming out? The Urshifu is in a great late game position where, of course, it doesn't have to worry about potential protects. But another question I have is, can the pre-marine on Christopher Zen actually take a Moonblast? Because it looks like it's the Assault Vest variant. It's been so, so bulky. And, you know, if you can't pick up a knockout onto that, Pre-Marina can just retaliate with an attack into the Urshifu slot, bring it down to its Focus Sash, and then the Ninetales will effectively knock it out after one turn of hail. Yeah, maybe taking a bit of a riskier play here as well, as we can see that the Blizzard is what's going to be coming through. Christopher's Ferrothorn does opt to protect itself just to make sure that it's not going to be taking too much damage as this Urshifu goes for it. The Surging Strikes now. Love this animation, by the way. Super, super fun, as this does connect with the Primarina, and you can see that might not have been a three-hit knockout, but four will do the trick. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a safe play there as well, you as the Blizzard comes out. So Blizzard, you know, actually can take advantage of the hail coming up from the Ninetales. So uh, protect there from Ferrothorn was specifically to avoid any damage from Pre Marina. Of course, the Urshifu could have targeted that slot, but uh, GSOC had to worry about, you know, Pre Marina not being able to knock out Christopher's Pre Marina. So Surging Strikes, they're kind of a guaranteed attack into that slot. The one thing you don't really want to see switching into a Surging Strikes is the Ferrothorn, but that's already out on the field, so no worries about that. So, you know, picks up a knockout. Ferrothorn is able to heal a bit, but, uh, you know, still in pressure of close combat. And, oh, Togekiss, I think, is the perfect fourth Pokemon for Christopher to have here because you're able to redirect any attacks away from the Ferrothorn, right? And Ferrothorn, I think, is an excellent late-game win condition, especially as soon as you chip away a little bit from the opposing Urshifu. I mean, it becomes this late-game monster, especially after a potential Iron Defense. So lots of options for Christopher right now. I think uh, Follow Me from Togekiss allows you to at least redirect a close combat away this turn. And if g wants to read into that, you know, you just go for Surging Strikes maybe into the uh, Togekiss slot or opt for the Detect, which he's opting for here, uh, to kind of just get free damage onto Togekiss immediately. But opting for the Blizzard, which is a little bit risky, of course, because it's not that accurate. Yeah. I was going to say, a high risk, high reward, maybe, if Chisok is able to hit the mark with the Blizzard, uh, knowing that Togekiss is going to be in and highly susceptible to that attack. But it's going to be the Detect coming out from Chisok's Urshifu first, just to really try to detect away some of that damage. As Togekiss goes for the Follow Me, not going to help, based on what Pre Marina decided to use for oh, its attack. And it connects with both. <laughs> Oh, that's huge. Uh, Life or Blizzard outside of Hail there being able to connect onto both. And Leech Seed also whips into the Urshifu slot. So Ferrothorn's still able to heal back a little bit this turn. But uh, that's a fantastic protect there from Jisok Sen. There's really not much reason to try to just go for a Surging Strikes immediately. Because if the Togekiss, say, opts for something like a Dazzling Gleam there, you'll be uh, down to your Focus Sash. And you kind of need the Urshifu to kind of have a chance of dealing with the Ferrothorn here. However, this is still a little bit tricky, right? I think the Urshifu here can pick up the knockout onto uh, Christopher's Togekiss, but then can Primarina actually knock out the Ferrothorn? I don't think so. I mean, maybe a single target Blizzard can finish it off. Uh, Gsoc can also play a little bit more aggressively here and, you know, go for a close combat outright, but I think Surging Strikes into Togekiss is always the safer play. And yeah, you could go for a Hydro Cannon, which yeah, I, I'm really curious if it's enough to pick up the knockout. I mean, this is Life Orb Primarina, so Ferrothorn could tr try to protect here, and that's exactly what it opts for. So you get that free switch into Ninetales, and you heal back a little bit more. Yeah, the, uh, Christopher can really play safely with this Ferrothorn, just protecting and kind of cycling through those protects in order to get back some health from its leftovers as well as the Leech Seed. And I think that's something that Christopher can really rely on in the late game as Togekiss does get knocked out from these Surging Strikes. And we will see that Primarina is not going to be able to connect onto this Ferrothorn because of the Protect. Yeah, the main problem for Ferrothorn is that it's still staring down the Urshifu, right? And a close combat into that slot is just True. really, really safe guaranteed damage. You can't even protect from it. So I really like how uh, G-Sox kind of managed this end game. I think great decision to not go for an attack with the Urshifu there, just, you know, recognizing, uh, you know, a couple turns ago that it is the win condition against Ferrothorn. And while Togekiss looked kind of tricky, you know, Blizzard being able to connect with both Pokemon outside of the hail was huge, getting so much damage on the Togekiss and chipping away at the Ferrothorn as well. So now I think one of the big questions is what kind of attacks does Christopher actually have on the Ninetales? If it has a fairy type attack, maybe you can knock out the Urshifu after a fairy type attack and the hail, but you can, you know, pretty easily just 
get free damage at this point with the uh, Urshifu. Actually opting for the Surging Strikes there. I was thinking close combat into Ferrothorn is maybe a little bit safer, but uh, perhaps maybe reading into a potential Protect right now. Uh, I think, yeah, both options are fine because right now Urshifu does put on a lot of offensive pressure and Blizzard with the, uh, you know, Life Orb actually does a sizable amount to the Ferrothorn as well. Royville first from the Ninetales, just to be able to set up some of those defenses from the Urshifu as well as the Primarina. The Surging Strikes is now going to come out from Chisok's Urshifu, and it does a decent amount of damage from this very first hit. Ninetales should be able to hang on, though, for this next turn. Yeah, almost picking up a knockout, but the Primarina going to finish it off here most likely with the Life Orb Blizzard. Let's see if it's able to hang on through the Aurora Veil. It is not, Ooh, and it chaos no. the Ferrothorn as well with a critical hit. Crit. Wow. This this Primarina put in some work here for Chisok with the Blizzard as well. So that's going to be first game going to Chisok. Yeah, I was kind of surprised to see him not just go for a close combat into the Ferrothorn slot. Of course, with Urshifu's ability, you don't even have to worry about Ferrothorn protecting that position. And it feels like if you're able to knock out the Ferrothorn, the game is most likely just over. But Chisok opting for uh, prioritizing the uh, Ninetales. And maybe that's because, you know, Ferrothorn never ended up getting any boosts throughout the course of that game. Didn't get a single iron defense off. He got one leech seed off and was able to heal back a little bit every turn. But uh, if you're not able to pick up a knockout onto either Pokemon, then the subsequent turn, I mean, you're still free to just launch close combat. So I think that was a pretty safe play, even without the critical hit there. You can just safely close combat into the Ferrothorn slot next turn. So unless Ferrothorn opted for like, you know, a body press and even with a critical hit, I'm not sure that's enough to actually knock out Urshifu. I think uh, pretty much a safe late game win condition from Chisok. So the main thing is that Ferrothorn looked like he put on a lot of pressure. This is kind of what happened in yesterday's, you know, games too, uh, from Christopher's opponent where it's on the field, but if it doesn't get a boost off, yeah, you know, it doesn't actually do very much and it kind of really relies on its partner to support it. And Togekiss kind of just came out and really did nothing in this game, you know, kind of just fainted uh, because of Chisok making that heads up play of, you know, getting chip damage so that it'd be in KO range from uh, Urshifu later on. So I think Urshifu, an incredibly important Pokemon for Chisok here in this matchup. We did see the follow me come through, just didn't happen to be enough uh, with the Togekiss next to the Ferrothorn. But as we get into this game too, we'll see whether or not any adjustments were made. I, I'm honestly thinking that from Chisok's side to the field, the Primarina was able to put out so much damage with just the, um, the amount of damage it was doing from its max moves. Um, but that's not what's on the field this time. Christopher Khan going with a similar strategy of bringing out the Alolan Ninetales and the Primarina, but it's Dragapult and Clefairy this time for Chisok. Yeah, so Dragapult here really doesn't like going up against the super effective attacks. In yesterday's game, we actually saw a weakness policy variant where it was able to you know, take a max Starfall uh, and then just KO Primarina after a max Phantasm defense drop. So here, I think, you know, Clefairy able to support a little bit. You actually do have to watch out for blizzards here immediately, but it looks like Chisok is content to just, you know, uh, click the go button with offense. You can go for a helping hand just to pick up the knockout onto nine chills. And looks like that's exactly what he's opting for. Recognizing I've got the friend guard with the Clefairy. I don't think the, you know, Primarina can actually knock me out. So even if you max Starfall me, you don't pick up the knockout. Now, I knock out the Ninetales uh, if, you know, it doesn't have the Focus Sash, uh, and then I get the Defense Drop as well. And so, you know, recognizing, uh, of course, both players have access to their each other's team sheets. I think that's why Chisok's going for this play. He wants to just eliminate Ninetales immediately, deny those screens, and with Friend Guard being able to support Dragapult, doesn't have to worry about actually getting knocked out immediately. Yeah, and this is something that is feels really reminiscent from game one, where we saw both players Dynamax really, really early, trying to hit that go button and put on pressure onto their opponent by Dynamaxing their Pokemon and making sure they're getting maximum value from those max moves. Um, Chisok with the Dragapult, Christopher Khan with the Primarina. So we'll see how this first turn plays out. Clefairy going for the Helping Hand, just to be able to add a little bit more damage to this Max Phantasm coming out. And with no switch out here from the Ninetales, it's definitely getting knocked out here. Yeah, no switch out and no protect, which I think is actually really, really critical there. If you get a protect off, you at least burn a turn of the Max and you force, you know, two turns of attacks from Dragapult in order to pick up the knockout. So. I think Chisok gets exactly what he, what he wants out of this turn. And yeah, with the friend guard there, Dragapult able to hang on after that max Starfall. So 
I think she's not going for a relatively safe play there. You'd imagine, though, if the Nine Chills protected and you get a free Starfall into the Dragapult, this game becomes a little bit more difficult. However, now he gets a lot of free damage off. Uh, you know, the Pre Marine on the opposing end looks like it uh, has that Assault Vest, so now it has that defense drop as well. You can go for something like another Helping Hand Max Phantasm. And so Dragapult really just putting on a lot of pressure damage wise immediately. In the last game, I think the. You know, Pre Marina versus Pre Marina War didn't really favor Chisok, even though he's faster because the Pre Marina is just so bulky on the opposing end. But now, with the ability to get all these defense drops, yeah, I think going for something like Helping Hand Phantasm into Pre Marina is really safe. Uh, could even consider, like, protecting uh, or switching out. I think one thing you have to be slightly aware of is the Ferrothorn endgame, where it just gets a ton of defense uh, boosts with mm -hmm. uh, Iron Defense. But right now, Ferrothorn doesn't actually put on any offensive pressure whatsoever. Well, I really like this follow me coming out from the Clefairy because Dragapult is in a little bit of a dangerous and precarious position. If any attack comes out from this Ferrothorn or this Primarina, then you know that the Dragapult's going to be safe. But look at that. Primarina is actually not going to be able to get knocked out from just a single Max Phantasm here. Yeah, and I think Chisok wasn't confident in helping hand Max Phantasm picking up the knockout, so rather wanted to secure, you know, uh, safety for the Dragapult here, make sure that it does not uh, get knocked out this turn in. But, you know, here the Iron Defense is coming out, so the thing is that Ferrothorn will most likely be able to get to plus two defense after this next turn, as I think Chisok's play is to just go for another Phantasm and knock out the Pre Marina finally. So, we've got a sneak peek of what... Chisok has in the back, there is the Urshifu. So Urshifu with close combat, you know, is able to do a sizable amount. No, you know, special fire type attacks though. So Ferrothorn is able to boost all the way up. Might make it more difficult. So here I think like you can easily go for a Phantasm to Pre-Marina and switch out the Clefairy. Uh, I don't know if Clefairy really needs to go for something like a Follow Me right now. If you get the Urshifu in, you know, then you pressure the Ferrothorn with close combat. But I, I think Chisok also might be a little bit wary of just... Uh, you know, taking too much damage on a switch in. If Christopher reads into that and goes for a uh, body press, that'd be really bad. So I'm going to just play it safer right now. Wants to sacrifice his Pokemon uh, and get a free switch in into that Urshifu later on. Well, yeah, this is something that we don't see super often. A Dynamax Pokemon coming back into its Pokeball in order to preserve it for later. Uh, Christopher giving up that last turn of Dynamax to be able to bring out Togekiss in its stead. We do see the Helping Hand Max Phantasm come through, and Togekiss, the target of this, uh, is not going to get knocked out either. So this, I think, was a great defensive switch from Christopher. Yeah, but Chisok also makes a great play by going for the helping hand there. Clefairy didn't really have very much to do other than switch out. And I, you know, I was saying maybe mm -hmm. potentially switch out into the Urshifu there. But by going for the helping hand, I mean, you're always going to knock out the Pre Marina if it stays in. And it covers for any potential switch outs. And that's exactly what happens. Now, Togekiss takes so much damage that it's definitely in KO range from pretty much any attack uh, in the back from the Pokemon, right? I think like. Dragapult won't be able to do very much this subsequent turn, can maybe go for a Phantom Force, but I will say what is scary right now is the Ferrothorn on Christopher's end. It's already gotten, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of Iron Defenses off, and right now Chisok doesn't really put on any offensive pressure against it, so I think Ferrothorn right now can tend to just go for two more Iron Defenses, try to get to plus six defense as quickly as possible, uh, and if you get there, then, you know, it's pretty difficult actually to pick up a knockout onto it, even with super effective attacks. That is going to be really tough. You mentioned that there is the Urshifu in the back that could be able to do something like close combat into it, but with plus six defense, it is going to be much more of a fortress to get through. Uh, I'm kind of wondering what Chisok is planning on doing here. You can go for it, the safe play, which would be trying to get the knockout onto Togekiss or also covering the switch in for maybe Primarina coming back in. Um, but also, what do you do with Clefairy? So I guess go for a protect and hope that maybe something targeted it down. Yeah, and this is a really safe play this turn. The Phantom Force basically guarantees that you do not take any damage onto that slot. I think Ferrothorn, you know, want it, wants to consider to just Iron Defense because it wants to get to, yeah, plus six defense as quickly as possible mm -hmm. to deal with the potential Urshifu threat in the back. So uh, this play was, I think, really safe from both players then. Now, Chisok will get a guaranteed Phantom Force in the Togekiss slot. That's either going to knock out Togekiss or most likely the Primarine on the switch in as well. So should be picking up a knockout here, especially because Christopher can't actually protect himself from that. So yeah, I'm, once again, the, the big question is how does Chisok actually deal with this end game? Uh, you know, considering that uh, this Ferrothorn has already gotten so many defense boosts off. He's got his own Ferrothorn, which is really interesting, right? So I think uh, conserving Clefairy to provide redirection support and friend guard make a lot of sense if you give up both pokemon here then you're going to be playing the 2v2 but ferrothorn is going to have 
you know, multiple increased stages of defense. So this Fire Throne is looking really scary right now. And that's, you know, exactly what it wants to do. Come out when your opponent isn't pressuring you with any super effective attacks. Get these defense boosts before those physical super effective attacks actually come out. And then you're in a pretty prime position. Chisok is thinking about switching in the Urshifu. So maybe saving it for the Clefairy Ferrothorn game in the back. Um, going to be really interesting, I think, when we get into these next couple of turns because the, we're getting into some really pivotal moments in this game, particularly because Christopher is getting this Ferrothorn set up and also a helping hand coming out from Togekiss. What is this Ferrothorn getting up to here? Dragon Bolt goes for the Phantom Force, does get the knockout onto Togekiss after it got a chance to use the helping hand, but... Aaron, what is this Ferrothorn about to do? It's gonna There's the body press. press, there's the Urshifu, and I think that's just fainting. <laughs> yeah, oh. oh my goodness. If it didn't have that focus dash, for sure, but the hail gonna stop right in the nick of time, too. Yeah, hail does stop at a perfect time. I think if the Urshifu goes down there, it's looking very, very good for Christopher, actually, because Urshifu is pretty much the only way to really deal damage at this point. Uh, you know, chisok has got his own Ferrothorn in the back, but that's not really going to win when the opposing Ferrothorn's already gotten all these boosts. I mean, now you do get, like, a guaranteed close combat into that slot. It is at plus four defense, though, so I think, like, Dragable here probably wants to consider going for a Phantom Force to knock out Primarina. You'd also switch out into the Clefairy, but I think the goal was maybe to just pick up uh, four knockouts and then force it to a position where it's 4v1. And then at that point, actually, timer is a potential win condition as well. Uh, that's one of the downsides of using a slower base strategy like Ferrothorn. So, uh, looks like Chisok, though, opting just for pure damage right now. Uh, yeah, you know, you can consider detecting into the, um, the Urshifu as well. And I think he's just vying for his Ferrothorn to come out and then basically try to match the Ferrothorn with these, uh, boosts. Coming down to the wire, Chisok is just thinking through all of the different possibilities as we do see Dragapult go for the Dragon Darts and look after all those iron defense boosts. Dragon Darts is doing very, very little to this Ferrothorn. Just doing a, just a bit of chip damage here as the close combat comes oh. out into the Cream Arena. Does get the knockout, but whew. I was curious if the close combo would actually pick up the knockout there, and the fact that it does means, yeah, now it is a 4v1, and Christopher actually opted for another iron defense, which makes sense in the face of the Urshifu, so uh, great play by Chisok there to just, you know, pick up the knockout immediately. Uh, and yeah, I was thinking, you know, he could offer the Phantom Force there to kind of not take any damage this turn, but uh, yeah, he's probably confident in close combat actually picking up the knockout onto Prue Marina, so it is a 4 versus 1 now. But the question is, is there enough time in this game for Christopher to actually win? Because he actually needs to pick up a knockout, uh, you know, every turn if he can. You have to worry about the combination of Phantom Force and Protects as well. Uh, because once again, I think Timer is actually maybe the, the biggest win condition from Chisok's end at this point. Uh, because you're not really going to be able to do very much damage. So you can see he's opting for these attacks and Protects just to kind of burn another turn. Uh, of course, you can go for like a critical hit close combat. But given what Chisok has in the back... There's pretty much no way to actually pick up a knockout onto a Ferrothorn, and his Ferrothorn in the back is just way too behind to actually get all these iron defenses off. So I think uh, Timer becomes a very real win condition at this point. Yeah, you can see it just coming down to the wire, trying to burn off as much of it as possible as we do see Dragapult go for the Protect and Detect coming out from Urshifu. So this Ferrothorn not going to be able to do much of anything, even though it's going to try with that plus six defense to go for these body presses. Yeah, so I think Chisok at this point, you know, might be considering to just keep swapping around. Uh, one thing that's actually really important also is that the Ferrothorn, of course, cannot go for a body press into Dragapult. So if you want to knock out the Dragapult, you actually need to Leech Seed it as well, which makes it, you know, more difficult to knock out. So uh, Chisok at this point, I think, recognizes there's no way to actually deal enough damage to the Ferrothorn. And playing for the critical hit win condition doesn't feel super great as well. So I like this decision to try to just go for a switch immediately. Um, you know, you want to just keep going for protects throughout. I think you can also give up the Urshifu at this point because he's got protect on both the Clefairy on and the Ferrothorn in the back. But I think this play makes a lot of sense as well. At this point, I think Christopher is just clicking the body press attack every turn. You need to basically try to pick up three knockouts as soon as you can at this point with timer running down. Well, also, what else can you really do? If you're mm -hmm. going to try to set up a Leech Seed, then you might whiff it into something like a Protect. So I think going for the Body Press is definitely something that this Ferrothorn has to go for here. As you can see, with the plus six defense, Ferrothorn's taking these Dragon Darts really, really well once again. So Body Press now coming through onto the Clefairy, and that's going to be one knockout for Christopher. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, without Timer being a win condition, this Ferrothorn should win pretty much all the time, because uh, as long as you don't get crit by a close combat, right? Because, like, you can just keep body pressing everything. Uh, you don't really have to care about the Dragapult at all. Dragapult is not a threat whatsoever. So all you have to do is keep knocking out Dragapult's partners and then just Leech Seed in the late game to deal with the Dragapult. So, you know, g sox got his own Ferrothorn, and it's just tough because, you know, the opposing Ferrothorn is so boosted up at this point. I'm curious if, like, this Ferrothorn gets a body press, whether it can survive at a body press from the opposing one. I wouldn't think so, honestly, mm -hmm. but I, once again, for Chisok right now, uh, the, the main win condition is honestly just, yeah, uh, waiting for the, the timer to expire, uh, as opposed to actually trying to go for, like, a critical hit at this point. And once again, for Christopher, all you have to do is just keep clicking body press and knock out everything around the Dragapult, and then just, uh, you know, leech seed the Dragapult in the late game, hope for no critical hits. But timer is getting dangerously low. I'm just waiting for that three-minute mark which we have not hit yet, I believe. No, we haven't. So that means that Chisok is going to have to be really wary about the your time that they have left to make these moves and make these selections. Um, I think going for the double protect here is definitely really safe, given that Christopher is trying to secure these knockouts. So just to protect from Dragapult as well as to protect from Ferrothorn, and Christopher can't do anything once again in this turn. Yeah, and I really like that you point out the your time as well. Of course, with your time being a mechanic in the game now, you can't just, you know, stall out every time uh, or every turn and just use up all your time because if you run out of your time, you'll actually end up just losing the game outright. So I think, yeah, Chisok recognizes I'm running a little bit lower on your time, so it's playing, you know, slightly faster now. So let's see. It's going to be a Dragon Darts. You know, every single move kind of extends the battle just a little bit. But at a Ferrothorn at this point, you know, We'll see if it's able to actually pick up a knockout onto G Sox uh, Ferrothorn. Because if so, I think you know, it's a, you know, G Sox Ferrothorn wow. goes first though. Okay, it is does. Body Press it's able to pick up a knockout? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, survival would be through. absolutely huge. Oh, oh it hangs on. Yeah. Wow. I mean, this is just the the bulk of Ferrothorn, right? I think uh, absolutely critical survival there, making the game just last so much longer. Uh, and you know, G Sox can now just opt for you know another double protect and then try to just go for another defense with the Ferrothorn. And with the Leftovers recovery, I'm curious if it can actually maybe hang on. Uh, the fact that he's able to outspeed Christopher's Ferrothorn there is absolutely huge though. I think mm -hmm. if Christopher's Ferrothorn gets that body press off first, even with timer being something in consideration, I think Christopher will most likely win. But this just extends the game for another couple of turns where yeah, once again, you can just go for a, a double protect relatively safely uh, and then you know Dragon Darts and Iron Defense the subsequent turn. For sure. I, I mean, Christopher's game plan at this point is just really hope that these body presses are going to be enough, um, especially because Christopher at this point is targeting down Chisox Ferrothorn. And, but the fact that Chisox Ferrothorn moved first, you could get another iron defense. These leftovers are helping to uh, regain some health. So it's going to be very, very difficult for Christopher to get through this defense. Yeah, I think for now, you know, Chisok once again, uh, just gonna go for Dragon Darts, and I would think you'd want to go for an Iron Defense again, uh, mm -hmm. just because, it, you know, it looks like he's been moving consistently first, and if you get another one off, I don't think Body Press is a knockout. And then, you know, you survive with the Ferrothorn again, uh, and then, you know, there's just not enough time at this point, right? I think, like, Christopher needed to get the knockout onto Ferrothorn, but because his Ferrothorn is slower, it really costs him here. Yeah, look at that. Iron Defense is moving first once again. So we'll have to see whether or not this body press from Christopher's Ferrothorn is going to be enough. Oh. Actually goes for the Leech Seed here. Says, you know what? I, I might have to just try to get this Dragapult out of the way. Yeah, and I think uh, that makes a lot of sense from Christopher's end, basically. He wants to now play the 1v1 against Chisok's Ferrothorn. Because once again, timer actually now could work in his favor if you're able to knock out uh, Chisok's Urshifu. But... Dragapult faints, Urshifu comes in now. Urshifu, of course, can go for it to tech. And then if it's Ferrothorn in the 1v1, you know, G-Sock's taken more damage with this Ferrothorn currently, whereas Christopher hasn't taken any damage with his. However, G-Sock's at this point also gotten a bunch of iron defenses off, so we'll be able to go for body presses of its own to chip away at Christopher's Ferrothorn. So here I'm thinking you'd probably just want to go for a double protect once again, just extend the game a little bit longer. I'm still waiting to see the uh, kind of like the three minute mark, but looks like actually G-Sock wanting to go for a third iron defense, which I think is, you know, pretty low risk as well, because uh, Christopher kind of has to respect the Urshifu in this slot does have to respect the Urshifu, but I think that makes it very difficult because now you know Urshifu can't necessarily go for a second detect in a row. Mm -hmm. um, so what it, now you kind of know exactly what Chisok's going to be pressing in these next couple of turns, I feel like. 
Yeah, oh my goodness. Boy, both Ferrothorns now are fully boosted up. So I think from Chisox and yeah, you just want to go for close combat and body press. And, uh, you know, this game's been going on for a while, but not long enough for the 20 minute timer to actually be super relevant. So let's we'll see how much this close combat does. I mean, the Ferrothorn is just going to knock out the Urshifu oh, through Iron so Barb. So. <laughs> so we've got the Ferrothorn 1v1 now, but. Chisok's Ferrothorn being faster is a big deal, right? Because he now gets a free body press into Christopher's Ferrothorn first. And there's the three minute timer mark. Okay. Body press comes out. And oh my goodness! Oh, it's a knockout! That's enough! It was a crit! Wow, it was oh. a crit! Oh, that's an what? absolutely huge critical hit there. I mean, Chisok did have the speed advantage, but at this point, both Ferrothorns were at a plus six defense. So I was thinking, you know, maybe Christopher can still pull it out because uh, if. Christopher just ends the turn with a little bit more HP. I mean, you're going to keep trading.